So it's just a huge historic step. It's going to make a big difference in uh, knowing what the future of those parcels are and what, you know, can, can happen there. So I look forward to working with the Park Board on this initiative. I think it's going to be a fantastic partnership and, you know, just offers us the next step in uh, redeveloping our riverfront, which, um, again, in the life of a city, we have made huge progress, and I attribute a lot of it to Miss Calvert, who's been involved with Central Riverfront over the years and uh, now this project. So uh, it's, it's just going to be fantastic. So thank you for all the staff work on this. Everybody that's worked on this, I see people from the Mississippi Riverfront Partnership are here. Thank you for the work. Two great articles about the work they've been doing with the watershed on uh, what are going to be the changes in the river because of the closing of the locks and then the great work on the historic part of uh, the, the riverfront trail. So um, but there's a lot of people that have worked on this a very long time, and, and I think we'll see progress, uh, maybe not rapidly, but uh, substantially. So thank you. Further comments or questions? Seeing none on the chair's motion to approve item number two as directed by staff. All in favor signify by say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. We'll then move on to our final item on the agenda today, which is item number 13. It's a quasi-judicial public hearing, and quasi-judicial public hearings are chaired by Council Member Fry. So I'll turn the chair over to Council Member Fry. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have one item, which is number 13 on the agenda for today, which is dealing with a rental dwelling license revocation, several uh, uh, addresses under ownership of Mahmoud Khan, uh, and is considering revocation of rental licenses for the 42 properties listed in the staff report. And uh, here to speak, go take it away. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee members. The respondent, Mahmoud Khan, is the owner of 50 residential rental properties in the city of Minneapolis. He currently holds a rental dwelling license for 42 properties. On June 14, 2010, a revocation actually occurred for the property located at 3223 Bryant Avenue North, per Minneapolis Code of Ordinances, 244-1910, Section 3, as there were two incidences of illegal occupancy of the basement of the property. Mr. Khan appealed the revocation action, and a hearing occurred before Administrative Hearing Officer Fabian Hoffner. Mr. Hoffner concluded that Mr. Khan had twice violated the city's code by allowing tenants to use the basement unit as a bedroom and recommended that the license be revoked. On October 22, 2010, the City Council adopted Mr. Hoffner's recommendation. Mr. Khan appealed that revocation action to the Minnesota Court of Appeals. The court upheld the City Council's decision to revoke. On August 16, 2013, a second revocation action occurred for Mr. Khan's property located at 2714 4th Street North, per Minneapolis Code of Ordinances 244-1910, Section 5 as there were repeated accumulations of weeds, vegetation, junk, debris, and rubbish at the property. Mr. Khan appealed the action, and a hearing occurred before Administrative Hearing Officer Edward Backstrom. Mr. Backstrom concluded that Mr. Khan had violated the city ordinance and recommended that the license be revoked. On February 21, 2014, the City Council adopted Mr. Backstrom's recommendation. Mr. Khan appealed that decision to the Minnesota Court of Appeals, and the Court of Appeals held up the City Council's decision to revoke. Since Mr. Khan had two previous licenses revoked, it renders him ineligible to continue to hold any rental licenses or his remaining properties per Licensing Standard 13 of Minneapolis Code of Ordinances 244-1910, which states, any person who has had an interest in two or more licenses revoked shall be ineligible to hold or have an interest in a rental dwelling license or provisional license for a period of five years. On February 13, 2015, a notice of revocation was sent to Mr. Khan and his attorney via U.S. and certified mail. The notices were also posted on all the rental dwellings, giving 15 days to file an appeal. An appeal was received. In addition, on March 6, a notice of revocation action was sent to Mr. Khan and his attorney via U.S. and certified mail, citing that Mr. Khan was in violation of Licensing Standard 19 of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances 244-1910. The notices were also posted on the rental dwellings, giving him 15 days to file an appeal. An appeal was received. On August 12th, 13th, and September 30th, 2015, the revocation hearing occurred in front of Hearing Officer James Gervich. Mr. Gervich considered all of the evidence presented, the arguments offered by both parties, and concluded that Mr. Khan was in violation of licensing standards 13 and 19 of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances 244-1910, and recommended the licenses for the 42 properties be revoked. The city is requesting recommendation of the hearing officer's decision, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. 
Uh, thank you, Ms. Dowling. One quick question for me. The this action comes under two separate ordinance numbers, and 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 we can find uh, proper cause under either one of them. So it's either MCCO MCO two forty four nineteen ten thirteen A as one, um, and then nineteen is the second thirteen A being the ordinance for, that allows a, a city to revoke the remaining licenses once two have already been taken away, and then um, nineteen being the showing of, of simply good cause. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, committee members, that is correct. It's uh, the, a just cause action. Just cause. Yep. Thank you. Do we have any further questions uh, for Ms. Dowling at the moment? No. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Ms. Dowling. Uh, maybe calling you back up in, in a minute here to, to clarify a few other items. In the meantime, however, I'll read the introductory statement. Uh, this is a quasi-judicial license hearing for which this committee is limited by law to hearing argument from the property owner or the owner's representative, but is prohibited from considering any further evidence or taking any further testimony. This means that you are required to limit your comments to arguments specifically addressing the evidence or testimony introduced before the hearing officer, which is part of the record that is already before us. You may not offer and we may not consider any new or additional evidence. Based solely on this existing record and the arguments that the parties make today, the City Council may affirm, modify, or reverse the recommendation that is before us. Uh, that being said, uh, I would like to uh, invite up either the owner and or the uh, owner's representative, and I have on my list here that uh, I believe it's Edmund Rooney, uh, would like to Ed Rooney would like to speak on uh, uh, behalf of Mr. Khan. And if you could uh, please state your uh, your name as well as your address for the record. Um, and then uh, if you could keep your testimony limited to that which has been presented to the hearing officer. Thank you, Mr. Fry. Members of the committee, my name is Edward Rooney, R-O-O-N-E-Y. I'm an attorney from Mahmoud Khan. My address is 100 North 6th Street, Suite 550A, Minneapolis 55403. Um, I'll try to make my... <coughs> presentation brief, but basically what I wanted to make is three points. One is legally you can't do anything adverse to Mr. Khan's license because these proceedings have been fatally flawed. Secondly, even if you could, you shouldn't, and I'll explain why. And thirdly, I'll tell you what I think you should do. I don't want to get into great detail of it because it's issues that probably are more properly addressed by a court, but basically we were not allowed to present all the evidence we wanted to, and also we believe that this whole hearing process began without proper uh, action by the City Regulatory Commission. The, Mr. Gurevich had no uh, really authority to rule at all on anything. Also, I will tell you that uh, we are aware of the Section 13 of the Code and Ordinance about two revocations. Our interpretation of the ordinance overall says that that does not authorize revocation. It may authorize a refusal, refusal to reissue, but there have to be two violations of that ordinance in order for there to be a revocation. So for there to be two violations of Section 13, there have to be a total of four individual property revocations. That has not happened. But these are issues more for a court. But let's, I think the fundamental problem that we've had with the city here and with Mr. Gurevich's hearing officer, and the reason he refused to let us present all of the evidence that we should have been allowed to present, is that the city wants, and Mr. Gurevich agreed, that this is a dispute that should be decided solely under the City of Minneapolis Code of Ordinances. But that's wrong. This is a civil rights dispute. This is a fair housing dispute. And you cannot decide a civil rights or fair housing dispute without looking at the United States Fair Housing Act, without looking at the Minnesota Human Rights Act, and without looking at the obligations that the city has voluntarily undertaken in return for obtaining federal community development block grants to affirmatively promote fair housing, not just to not discriminate, but to affirmatively promote fair housing. And Mr. Gurevich refused to let us present evidence on those issues. But let's get to what we do know. We do know that there's a Fair Housing Act. It's law. It's not evidence. I can talk about that. There's a Federal Fair Housing Act that says it's the policy of the United States to have fair housing throughout the United States, including Minneapolis, Minnesota. We know that the Minnesota Human Rights Act forbids discrimination in housing, in rental housing and housing ownership. Not only that, the Minnesota Human Rights Act forbids anyone from interfering with someone. Yes. 
if I could stop you for one second here, is it is it your contention uh, that what we are deciding on today is whether the Fair Housing Act uh, or some other anti discrimination act is what we we are to be evaluating? You should. Well, legally, is, is that your contention? It's my contention that the Fair Housing Act is the law of the land and applies to every action of every government. I, I understand in the that's States. your contention, sir. But is 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 are you uh, saying that that's what we should be adjudicating in today's hearing? How can you not, as acting as a government authority under the authority of the U.S.? All right, you may you may continue. Um, okay, but I'll, I'll okay. So that's that's the legal landscape that we're in. But let's look at the factual landscape, just at the record. Well, we also, I guess we should know, because Mr. Gurevich refused to let me present evidence as to the dire shortage of affordable so, fair housing Mr. in Minneapolis. Mr. Rooney, the fact that Mr. Gurevich refused to allow you to present testimony at the previous hearing is certainly a subject matter that you can take up with the court subsequent to now, but um, by law, we are barred from considering evidence that wasn't presented to the hearing officer previously. True enough, but tribunals can take judicious, judicial notice of non-disputed facts, and I don't think there's any dispute if anyone's read the newspapers for the last year that there's a shortage of affordable with, with, Whether I'll, it's I'll, a disputed I'll, or a non-disputed fact, it has to have been presented previously. Okay. Well, so these have, are matters of evidence that you can certainly take up in a subsequent time. We have evidence in the record acknowledging that there's a shortage of affordable rental housing in Minneapolis. We have evidence in the record acknowledging that our homeless shelters are full. Here's, here's what we also have in the record. We know that over 90% of Mr. Khan's tenants are members of protected classes for purposes of housing discrimination, whether that's racial, uh, national origin, religion, family status, disability. Mr. Khan testified. He went through a spreadsheet of all of his tenants and showed for the record that over 90% of them are members of protected classes. That certainly bears on application of the non Mr. Rooney, I'm sorry, these, these are still matters of, of state and federal law, and regardless of the legitimacy of your claims, I don't think this council here is equipped to be adjudicating these issues. So do you do you have arguments that are relevant to statute to ordinances either 244-19-10-13-A or 244-19-10-19? I do, but first let me think, I, let me state for the record, I think you are 100% wrong to say that the council cannot consider the governing federal and state law. I think that is a ludicrous proposition of law. The city of Minneapolis is bound by the Minnesota Human Rights Act. And the, but I, will, I, I, I would agree with you that we are bound by it, but adjudicating those items is another issue altogether. How can you take an action depriving a man of his livelihood, throwing 300 tenants into the street, and say you don't have to consider governing federal and state anti-discrimination law in doing that. That's nonsense. Continue, please. Thank you. What we do know from the record is that Mr. Khan has not had to advertise for tenants for the last 10 or 12 years. He receives repeated referrals from homeless shelters, from social service agencies. We know from the record that he's referred tenants through the Hennepin County Shelter Program, through Mary's Place, through people serving people, through Catholic charities, through the Salvation Army, through Lutheran Social Services. And this is not one time. This is over and over through St. Stephen's Shelter, through the Community Action of Hennepin County. That is in the record. He gets repeat referrals. They would not, I think we can make inferences, these organizations, which are looking out for the well-being of the people they serve, would not send this man repeat referrals if they thought he was not providing safe, sound housing for the people they refer to him. We know that Mr. Khan has been in this business for 31 years and that his tenants come back to him over and over again. We know that from the record. Donna Graham, who was a tenant who testified, said she's come back to him over and over again. Candace Vance is a tenant who testified, and I can provide you with the uh, transcript citations if you'd like. They come back to him over and over again. He has a good reputation among tenants. That's in the record. We have no evidence whatsoever contradicting that. No record evidence criticizing Mr. Khan from either current tenants, former tenants, or any tenant advocacy agency. The record shows that Mr. Khan is providing a valuable service for providing affordable housing. It also shows that he is providing it to people coming out of homeless shelters, coming out of prison, 
people who are at the very lowest margin, the hardest people to find rentals for. And if we acknowledge that we have a homelessness crisis in this community, we should be giving Mr. Khan an award for helping deal with it rather than taking away his licenses. But if you want to get right to the ordinances, if you want a legal argument on interpretation of the ordinances, I'll be happy to give you that I as do. well. First of all, go, uh, well, first of all, the, the blanket revocation on account of two individual properties revocations is an ordinance provision that I don't think would stand up to constitutional scrutiny or scrutiny under the anti-discrimination laws. But setting that aside, if you don't want to deal with that, if you look at the ordinance carefully, it says you can be you can have your licenses revoked, and this is a proceeding apparently to revoke Mr. Khan's licenses. If you look at that ordinance carefully, it's for two violations of Section 13, not for one violation, which would be two individual property uh, licenses being revoked, but for two violations. Granted, that is a technical legal reading of the ordinance, but if ordinances don't stand up to technical legal readings, they don't deserve to be enforced. Mr. Rainey, I'm not understanding you at all on this point. If you care to just remake it in a different way. Sure, and, and let me, I, I addressed it in more detail in my client's letter brief dated October 21st, 2015 to Mr. Gurevich, but I will try to uh, summarize that if I can in a moment for you. Okay, Minneapolis Code of Ordinance 244.1910 sets forth numerous eligibility conditions for rental housing license, and it states at its subdivision A, 13A, mm -hmm. any person who has had an interest in two or more licenses revoked pursuant to this article or canceled pursuant to another section, or a combination of revocations or cancellations, shall be ineligible to hold or have an interest in rental dwelling licenses or provisional licenses for a period of five years. So, doesn't say a word about revocation. Revocation is not in that ordinance, but or not that in that subdivision. But revocation is in a different subdivision. So, well, hang on a second, Mr. Rooney. It, it says okay. It says, any person who has interest in two more licenses revoked pursuant to this article or canceled pursuant to 244.1925 or a combination of revocations or cancellations shall be ineligible to hold or to have in present tense. To hold or to have means presently you are in ownership and you are presently renting those out. It doesn't mention revocation because, as, at least in my reading, it doesn't need to. Well, if it said in future tense, you are unable to further procure additional housing for a rental license, then your argument would make sense. Well, your argument would make sense if it weren't for the fact that there was a more specific part of the <clears throat> ordinance addressing revocations and circumstances under which there can be revocations. And that part of the ordinance says there can be a revocation if there are two violations of Section 13. Not a single violation of Section 13, but two of them. There have not been two. There cannot be a revocation. That's my argument. And I, 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 I will. Do you have any other additional arguments under the, the ordinances? Yes. Okay. 19 doesn't okay. exist. The code, the, the, it, 19 exists, of course, but it makes reference to a provision of the Minneapolis City Charter, which from my investigation doesn't exist. So you cannot, th this is a so-called just cause basis for revocation. I can't find a provision in the Minneapolis City Charter Current one. There was one back in 2001, but the city charter has been amended since then. And I don't know whether it was inadvertently or intentionally, but it appears to me that that so-called just cause revocation of licenses is no longer a part of the Minneapolis City Charter, and therefore the ordinance can't be used. Okay, so it's your contention that MCO 244-1910-19 19 can't be utilized at all. Is that what you're saying? That it provides no basis for a revocation. I understand. Do you have any additional points? Yes, I do. I'm sorry. Any other what? Do you have any additional points regarding the ordinance? Those are my two, two points under okay. the ordinance. Well, I guess the third point that I'll say under the ordinance, since we're parsing the ordinance, the ordinance requires, before there's an adverse license action, that the, and excuse me if I get the exact title of the officer wrong, the director of the Department of Regulatory Services 
must make a recommendation with respect to what should be done in light of it. There has to be a recommendation from the director. That starts out the whole procedure. That's what gives rise to a hearing. That's what gives the administrative hearing officer the authority to consider whether the recommendation is reasonable. There was no recommendation from the, and the evidence supports that. We asked Ms. Zerke, uh, who was the records custodian, well, where is the recommendation from the department? It's not there. They, they, they couldn't find it. And without a recommendation, you don't have a basis to start this whole proceeding. So an analogi an analogizing to courts, this forum that purported to act had no subject matter jurisdiction. It didn't have the prerequisite first step that was supposed to have taken. So that's my third ordinance uh, argument under the ordinance. It was basically the threshold argument. We never should have been here in the first place. Now, Thank you, Mr. Ray. Do you have any points of clarification regarding the factual uh, regarding the facts that ultimately led to these inspections and or revocations? Uh, you mean the two individual license revocations? Correct. Well, I'll, I'll make a point of clarification because it's in the record and it deserves to be considered, considering the fact the property at 2714 North 4th Street was the second recommendation, and that's the one where Mr. Kahn's license was revoked for his failure to pick up trash that was left on the property promptly enough. No claim that he left the trash on the property. No claim that the tenants left the trash on the property. But he's the landlord. He's supposed to pick it up. And perhaps that's true. But I think the overall context is ignored here, and that is this is a property which was condemned, boarded up, slated for demolition. And this is evidence in the record Mr. from Chair, Mr. Khan's testimony. Um, Joel Fossey, Assistant City Attorney, I would note that um, that – hearing that uh, revocation action went to the Court of Appeals. It's been upheld. I don't think it's proper to debate the facts of that underlying revocation action at this uh, proceeding. I was asked by the chairman. I think Thank I you, Mr. Fuzzy. I, 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 I would agree. So the revocation that he's presently referencing is neither of the two that we're presently dealing with. Well, Mr. Chair, it stated another way, the two the two previous revocations have run their course. They've been vested. Those records are closed. It's the fact that there have been two revocations that are at issue Correct. here today. I don't think it's proper to reopen or reconsider the facts that led to those two uh, revocations that are before you today. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, so we've we've been through item number one of your of your two and three. Um, no, no. We, well, well, yes, we've been through item number one, which is to say you can't do it legally. Item number two is to say you shouldn't. Right. And one of the reasons why you shouldn't, and we'll forget about whether or not there was a revocation, 2714 North 4th Street was one of the dozen or so properties that were vacant, boarded up, going to be condemned and demolished, and instead Mr. Khan bought them, put in his own resources, subject them to many inspections, brought them up to code compliance, made them so they were occupy occupiable by tenants, relieve the housing crisis here, and put property back on the tax rolls. That is another reason why you shouldn't. You should give this man some consideration for what he's done for the city of Minneapolis and its low-income tenants. But getting back to my other reasons why you shouldn't. Mr. Rooney, I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to get back to the, the facts that are actually relevant to the hearing at this point. Um, so I, if, I, I, I don't want to cut you off, but uh, we really need to focus on the, the record that is actually before us. Well, with all respect, it sounds like you are cutting me off. If you're going to say that, the, if you're not going to consider reasonableness and are just going to do some kind of mechanistic application of what you believe the code ordinance re requires, then I think you're once again running completely afoul of anti-discrimination laws. But the, I will briefly, and I can be briefly, I'm more than halfway through, cover the other ones, which are Mr. Khan has, has testified and his employees and helpers have testified that in the last two years, he has improved his management habits considerably. He's gotten help. And this is where your record breaks down. The city of Minneapolis provided a record of all of these um, site inspections, which, of course, can include drive-by site inspections where the inspector never gets out of the car, all these violation letters, all these violations, and the few numbers of administrative citations, although your own witness, Mr. Vutron, the supervisor of housing inspections on the north side, said that it wasn't really a very high number of citations. But they dump this raw data at you and ask you to draw some kind of meaningful conclusions from it. But what they don't provide you, and they say they could have, but they chose not to, 
is any kind of breakdown in that data. It's a covering a seven year period. We don't know for, we don't know whether all of these violations occurred five years ago and that the last five years have been fine. We simply don't know. I doubt that that's the case, but the city has the burden of proof in this proceeding and they didn't tell us that. Likewise, the city said it would be too hard to provide comparable uh, documentation with respect to other Northside landlords. So we don't know whether Mr. Kahn's record of violations is better than average, worse than average, or anything. Likewise, I tried to get evidence. Well, the city of Minneapolis Public Housing Authority has 753 scattered site rental properties that they administer. I wanted to get evidence about maintenance of conditions of those properties. Mr. Gurevich refused to allow me to subpoena that evidence. So you're having a bunch of data meaning uh, dumped in your lap with no way to really use it to judge Mr. Kahn's current fitness as a landlord. Uh, I will tell you, and it's in the record, Mr. Kahn's properties have twice been put on your problem properties unit, and both times he has cooperated with the city inspections department to get them off. The first time they got all off. Mr. Rooney, I, I really do appreciate your, your testimony on this, and I don't wish, and I don't I wish to, I don't wish to cut you off. Uh, but the, your present, uh, version goes well beyond what we are permitted to, uh, consider at this moment. And in fact, I would actually call on our city attorney just to please reiterate, um, what the, the what we are presently allowed to consider. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair and committee members, uh, going to the ordinance governing the appeals, it states that you may hear argument from the license holder applicant, but shall take no further evidence, uh, simply means that in general, uh, the applicant can make, uh, arguments regarding, uh, what had, what was discussed in the record, the issues in the record and what is in the record. I believe that some of what, uh, Mr. Rooney has uh, argued about today certainly has been proper. He has been referencing things in the record. There have been other things that uh, certainly have gone outside of the record, um, and it can be a fine line, but um, I believe that the general guidance would be that if the arguments are with regard to something that is in the record, they would be proper, although they can be limited in uh, duration to uh, a reasonable amount of time. So, so, Mr. Fussy, if evidence was denied at a prior hearing, uh, whether by subpoena or otherwise, um, are we permitted to considering that evidence that was previously denied at this council meeting? Um, it, it, no, you are, you're, you're, you're bound to consider the argument that is the art, the record that is before you and the facts that are the, before you in that record. Um, I guess it's theoretical that you could reverse the hearing officer's determinations on those evidentiary issues. However, I don't think that's practical, and I think that each side had opportunities to argue uh, regarding admissibility, and they will have opportunities in further legal proceedings to renew those arguments. But what's before you today needs to be focused upon what was admitted into the record. Thank you. Two, two brief points. Please. Finishing up. Okay. Please. First of all, well, these, are, these are two items in the record. First of all, Many of the records that the city presented show that many of Mr. Kahn's licensed properties have few, if any, violations, and some have a lot. That would suggest that it's conditions at those properties, whether it's the neighborhood, the tenants, or the neighbors, rather than any lax maintenance problems on Mr. Kahn's part, because if Mr. Kahn was poorly maintaining his properties, you'd expect him to poorly maintain all of them. The other thing we know from the testimony of a city employee is that there is no requirement, there is no upper limit in the city rental housing license ordinance as to any number of site visits, violation letters, violations, or administrative citations that a licensee can have that somehow disqualifies him from continuing to hold a license. So we have a situation where if Mr. Kahn was issued 3,551 uh, violations, but 61 administrative citations, that meant for 3,490 of them, he promptly took care of them. The other ones, he disagreed with the city, and maybe those were resolved in his favor afterwards. So that's, that's section two, except I will say, and I believe I must say for the record, if your city attorney is telling you that you cannot consider the governing civil rights laws of either the state of Minnesota or the United States of America in deciding what to do with Mr. Kahn's licenses, I submit to you you're getting bad legal advice. But... Rather than continuing this litigation, which is what will happen if there's any adverse action taken against Mr. Kahn's license, Mr. Kahn has been at this for 30 years, 31 years. He'll be 63 years old next month. He spends 80 hours a week doing this. This is in the record. He is 
getting tired of it. He's looking for a way out. Whether that involves, and I know the city is looking to have more owner-occupied properties in North Minneapolis. If we can sit down and work something out, or if uh, he can divest himself of some of his properties, if they're going to remain rentals, I think he's perfectly prepared to litigate if he has to. But my, my suggestion to you is that you recommend to the city council that it just do a, I don't know, 60-day hold on any adverse action until Mr. Kahn and city authorities can sit down and see what can be worked out. Well, thank you very much for your patience. Thank you for your time, Mr. Rooney. Uh, before I open it up to uh, questions and comments by my fellow council members, Mr. Shookman or, and or council, do you have anything additional that you'd like to add um, or clarify as far as the, uh, as far as what was just presented? Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, uh, Noah Shuckman, Interim Director of Regulatory Services, uh, Lee Wolf, Assistant City Attorney. I would say at this time, uh, I don't have anything to add. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I can answer any questions you have as, as well. Uh, addressing uh, the legal points that uh, Mr. Rooney made, uh, those uh, arguments were already made to the hearing officer and the hearing officer after uh, getting briefing on those from both parties has made the decision. So I don't think it's uh, appropriate to re go relitigate that stuff when the hearing office has already heard the arguments and made uh, decisions on those. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. And if you could comment on on the legitimacy of considering the the, the federal and state claims, or actually not not just considering them, which of course we're required to do, but adjudicating them at this time. Your Honor, the city's uh, view is that at this point we're taking uh, adverse license action based on violations of the code. Uh, we haven't violated any rights at this point. Uh, if they may be an argument they may have uh, after uh, 